Good evening, Brian with Grand Roofing. We're going to do a quick roof inspection of this roof here, section by section, and try to learn some things. And a couple of key takeaways. Home inspections, home inspectors. If you're getting a home bought or sold and you're having an inspection done, watch this video. I cover this issue a lot in videos, and it could save you a lot of money. So this isn't for me, it's for you guys. Please, if you get any kind of takeaway, home inspections and what you're actually paying for and the quality of most home inspectors out there. All right, well, let's just get into the video. We're going to walk over this here. The call originally came in about if I could repair or quote repair around a pipe seal and a missing shingle. Now, the biggest emphasis on this home inspection, talking to them, the potential buyer's home inspector found some issues, said it needs to be repaired. Looking through the report, because they sent it to me ahead of time, I could read through this and it uh, clearly stated some facts, like it was a one-layer roof and it had some minor issues that need to be fixed. So let's just get into it and you make your opinion, your assumption, your thought, your recommendation on, hmm, that guy knew what he was talking about and this can be repaired, or wow, that guy missed all kinds of stuff and it needs to be replaced. All right, so if you're looking at getting any kind of real estate transaction done and a home inspector finds anything in the big main trades, electrical, framing, plumbing, roofing, do yourself a favor, if you're not skilled enough, contract somebody, third party, that doesn't have a financial gain in the sale or transaction of the home. Now, I'm going to be the bad guy at the end of this video talking to the homeowner. All right, let's get into it. I think I said the home inspector said it was one layer roof, and he noted in the, import, the report this missing shingle, said this shingle needs to be fixed. What gets me, though, is if you look at this and you're a home inspector, you should have the background, the knowledge, not just pass a test, right? You should clearly be able to see right here. This is evidence. It's a three tab layer under this roof. Most of the time you'll look up under a bottom edge. You'll see, but hey, we have the convenience of this right here. And this uh, home inspector saying it was one layer. He really is doing a disjustice to anyone he's ever worked for. If he cannot tell that right there, that this has clearly got a roof under it. And this honestly is the biggest issue. This roof is not totally, utterly destroyed. Hey, look at this right here. It's like ginkgo biloba tree actually no not the tree it's the leaf to a ginkgo biloba actually a lot of good uh, stuff you can get from these trees here anyway you don't see those in my area pretty uh regularly so that's why it caught my eye all right moving on so just the age of this roof this home inspector should have been like yeah that roof needs uh, to be replaced for example right here looking at this this is fiberglass matte showing so the anatomy of a shingle the basics of it look at this edge here so you got asphalt on the back, seal strips, asphalt on the front, granules, all right? That's what makes up the shingle. Then you have the laminate wedge and the shim, whatever you want to refer to it as, that make up the shingle. But as far as the fiberglass, that is the center of the shingle. The granules have come off and the asphalt has deteriorated. This is very permeable. If you drop some water into this, it'll soak in and work its way through. If the asphalt on the back, however, is worn off enough and broke down through the sun breaking it down, it will come in. Why is that an issue, you might say? Anywhere a shingle like this comes together, water gets in this and you're relying on the headlap to keep it dry. If there is a keyway, one of these under this, Water's going to seep through and get into it. But hey, on the bright side, you have another old roof that was probably put on right, keeping it dry. Try to keep the humor down on this, but it's everywhere. The amount of shingle loss, granule loss, I mean, asphalt showing, uh, wearing out, and the, the fiberglass showing, it's just bad. So some of the other things I will point out rather quickly here, the home inspector just say, hey, I can't see in your gutters, so I can't tell if they're rusty. Most of the time, your gutters are going to be aluminum. They're not going to rust. Furthermore, if you think it's steel, put a magnet to it, and it'll tell you, hey, it's steel. It could rust. It's got iron in it. Or look up at the bottom. Or, hey, quit being lazy. Because you can clearly do that real quick in your inspection report and be like, hey, it's aluminum. Did that take very long? Did that take a lot of common sense? No. I mean, why are people so lazy and don't know a thing in the trades these days and charge crazy money? And he's a licensed guy, right? I'm telling you, stick around. It gets way worse that this guy is charging to do home inspections and what they miss. I'm telling you people over the years, I wish I could show a lot of what I show, but I don't want to get sued over some of the stuff. I've come in between home inspectors and been like, uh, yeah, that's asbestos roof or, um, yeah, that's asbestos wrapped insulation and such and such. And your inspector didn't find that. Then they want to come and have me testify. It's just do your own diligence. That's what this is to bring you some awareness of what goes on in my area here in Indiana. I think you just take a simple test and you're a licensed inspector. You don't have any background in the trades. So please, they might give you a little insight on something. 
But if there's a sniff of anything, hire somebody in that trade that does not have an incentive, monetary gain on the buyer or the seller side. Because I'm gonna be the bad guy here and tell these people that it needs to be replaced. Look at this right here. Little two inch curving row right here. All right, moving on anyways, we'll get to the chimney. We're just gonna go around section by section. They did point out things like, hey, your trees are growing over the roof. Hey, you got some moss and mildew. Hey, Mr. Obvious. Um, but I want you to note something here, coming from somebody that roofs every day. Do you see any penetrations as far as like pipes and ventilation or anything? Keep that in mind for a minute as we go around this chimney and take a look at the chimney here. I do see what appears to be a vent pipe. Yeah, it's running furnace vent pipe coming through here. Where's the inlet? Probably in the attic, that's fine. I've seen them there many a times. But uh, notice your stink pipes, all right? We'll get back to that. Chimney, he did point out, hey, chimney, it's got tar. It's cracking, it needs to be repaired and replaced. Yeah, tar is not a good choice. You don't want to use tar, okay? It's bad, just inherently bad. If you need tar, you've done something wrong. That's honestly the truth. It's a roof over, and they never tucked under anything. That's probably why they smeared so much tar on it. And on the bright side, they did point out an obvious. You got cracks up here, which if left unaddressed, water penetration, freeze-thaw cycles will crack us and make it worse. Address that. Just ignore uh, the issue of the whole entire roof being bad. Oh, look at this right here. You see it? It's racked in. Most every manufacturer out there will not honor warranty. I really hope this was a DIYer that did not do his research on how to do a roof. I really hope it was not a contractor. And the valley here. Oh boy, we can learn from this thing. Uh, I don't even know where to begin. There's like a lot of issues here. So let's just dig in from the bottom where I'm standing. All right, you can't see it. The camera may not show it, but you got rotten wood right here. It's dipped down, it's rotten, not done right. A tar, that's a dead giveaway if you got issues and you're tarring it to try to stop water from getting in. And again, if the roof under this was not here, this would be a disaster. All right, since we're looking up the line of the valley, that cut line is actually way too far to the left. It should have been to the right of the valley. You want a channel for water coming down into the valley to run through and out and off, not up where water will work under. And there's probably a reason they did that, because they didn't run the layout of the shingles good at all. Gets to the next point, the pattern. You should not see keyways, drip grooves, butt joints, whatever you want to refer to, two shingles coming together as, this close to the valley. It's not right. It's bad. All this. Oh my god. Look at this. You got inch and a quarter coil nails that are bigger than the offset here. So water runs down this, coming down the whole roof above, through the valley, whatever and it comes in this keyway, you have that far, literally, that's it. You've got area where water is getting in, you can see the debris field, and it's only thing from keeping it from leaking is the roof under it. And it's not just that, it's all the way up. Look at these, look at that one, that's close too. It's on this side. So if you nail this right, you gotta nail this shingle, you can't nail on this keyway right here, so chances are they're probably shooting it in the valley where you're not supposed to shoot. Your shingles are started way too far left. These shingles are started way too far right. I imagine your nails are probably in the wrong spot. Let me see if I can see something here. I'm sure I'll be able to find some. I don't want to destroy the roof. Is there any of these loose? Oh my god, you've got to be kidding me. I've talked about Darwin Awards and roofing. This, oh my God. <laughs> it's up here too. For those of you that don't know, you can hear something in my voice, but you just don't know. Let's go into a, a, a quick thing of roofing 101. Okay, two shingles come together, you offset before you start your next one because water coming in this needs to be on the headlap of the shingle under it to work its way out. If you stack them like this, water gets in each one of these, three in a row, and it goes down right under this brand new, well, I wouldn't say brand new, under this layer of roof, and the only thing keeping this from being a shit show is the roof under it. I'm blown away. Uh, also, fact of no penetrations. No penetrations other than the riser, which we'll get to. This section here looked like it came straight over, and this is an addition at some point. You can see that looking down this hip here. And the reason I want to point that out, not that that is an issue, I'm guessing because there's no vent pipe coming through, typically out the back of the house is we're going to have a bathroom. 
uh, septic sewer stuff, especially out in the county. You probably had a penetration where the sewer vents, so when you flush the toilet, air comes in, and they probably built over it, because there's nothing on the rest of this house for one of those. And why that's an issue is because moisture comes up under the roof deck and gets into everything. It's not good. This is a disaster. This can't be repaired. This roof needs to be tore down completely and start over. Both layers, all the way down. Fix any bad wood, because it's all over. Well, bad wood here. Looks like there's some bad wood up on this section where it's like kind of ski jump down there. Also, they talked about uh, ventilation in this. I mean, I'm pretty sure that, yeah, I can feel something. It's all disgusting organic matter caked up in there. It's probably the old cobra vent, which is not good. Ventilation in your ridge is okay. It's good. I like it. it. Vents a lot if it's installed right, if it's cut open enough and use the right material. Don't use anything like the mesh, the Cobra vent, where it's going to clog up, especially if you have cellulose insulation. You don't want to walk on them either because you can actually pop the nails through. Use something that has a solid plastic baffle system that can support the weight and be fastened securely in vents. It's not going to clog. Just look up some things like Omni by Lamanco or Lamanco by Omni, whichever. Uh, maybe Snow Country, but Snow Country is a GF product, I believe. I'm not a fan of GF. Speaking of GF, look at this shingle here. That's the classic uh, Timber Tex by GF. They had two shingle ridge cap pieces and a third smaller piece right here where you nail. Now, when that shit hit the market first off, the seal strips on that, when you bend the radius of a ridge, the steeper the ridge, the more radius it would take up, it would crack those seal strips off. It was the stupidest design. They probably had some new engineer working for them, be like, oh, this is a great product. It looks good. Oh, it looks good, but it doesn't function where the dam, because when you fold it over, it cracks that seal strip. All right. So imagine this, flat, sealed, clear across, and you fold it over, it snaps that. So after they got some complaints, they imagine they got complaints because it was crap. We installed it where I used to work. I was like, dude, you got to get away from this. It's junk. And it folds over and cracks. So they actually started where they did not seal one side. It's just a junk product. Stay away from GAF. I voice my opinion. I've got the limited lifetime 50-year warranty. It's a bunch of marketing crap. They come out, two different salesmen, to my property and say, oh, you got 40 more years, Bob. Actually, it was more like you got 48 years. It was a new roof, a couple years old, color issues. This roof's not, this video's not about JF. It's about, I'm getting so sidetracked. How is it that I find so much stuff like this in my area? Do you guys find issues like this where you live? I don't know if it just, I'm plagued with bad roofers here in Howard County in my surrounding area in central Indiana, but I find bad stuff every day and it blows me away. Uh, all right, so let's look at this here. Quick 101 on riser boots and poles and things. So it is a roof over. They at least pulled it up to get it on top, and then they shot it on top, literally, and you got the hole in here, water debris coming down, face nails, not good. All right, so riser poles, first off. It should have been replaced, but they probably thought, oh, I got to call my power company, do the disconnect out at the pole, disconnect all this, take the head off, slide a boot on. There's something called a retro boot. I've done videos on this. You don't need to kill your service. You can keep it live. You rip out the old boot. You bring your roof up. You ready to roof it. Bring your shingles up. And this thing goes around the boot to the pole here. It's got different notched out sizes of rubber. There's various kind on the market, and they're split, so it straddles it, clips together on the low side, out of the flow of the water coming down the roof. I know, it's amazing, right? It took a lot of shit to think of anyway look up a retro boot split boot riser pull boot various things do away with this it's old it's seen its days it needs replaced and it needs installed right shingles tucked under flange on top the boot on top shingles on top of that water sheds down this right here wow rotting away sinking down to the roof deck not enough ventilation on the intake on here either i'm just i'm really blown away we're going along 14 minutes so in summary if you are buying or selling a home and an inspection finds anything, 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 please, I can't stress this enough. A lot of the videos on this I don't put out because I don't want to get sued. I can't call them out because they're going to come back at me. And some people get mad at me for that. That's not my job. I'm trying to share what I know here to you guys so you can learn, right? Do you want to learn how to paint by colors? Do you want to learn how to paint the damn Picasso, right? That's what I'm trying to do here. So don't get screwed Home inspections typically get fed by the realtors, and if they say, hey, we're not doing it, they may not use them again. It's, I hate speaking that way, because there are some realtors I like working for, working with, but most of the time it's a waste of time. And in issues like this, I'm not gonna turn a blind eye and just do these repairs 
because then the new buyer sees in the transaction, oh, Grand Roofing did that. Oh, if I lose work out of it, I'll lose work out of it. I want to sleep good at night. This is bad. I'm not trying to sell a roof. This roof has seen its time come and gone and it's installed bad. The only thing keeping it from being way worse is the roof under it. Home inspections. I think I just need to go pay for a quick test and get on some special easy job and defer, <laughs> defer. You know, most of the time, if you look at the fine print, if they find anything, it's like, hey, contact a qualified contractor. They're even telling you right there. It's a big scam. I don't get it. Yeah, I found a little issue. Hey, I found a ground fault doesn't work. It's not connected, right? Oh, you got to scrape in the paint. I've seen so much mist. It drives me insane. We're going long. I got to get, guys. It's the last work day of the year, Friday, December 29th. Weekend tomorrow. Happy 2024 coming on in. I'm ready for it. Ready for another good year. Guys, if you could, it means a lot. Smash the thumbs up button. The subscribe if you haven't. If you got any beneficial information out of this. As always, if you know anyone that's getting a roof done, send them my way. By the way, I got a phone call from, uh, what is it? Um, Better Business Bureau. I'm going to make a video on that coming up. They're such a scam themselves. <laughs> if you want to see that content, subscribe so you're notified when it comes out. If you have any input on Better Business Bureau, sounds so legit, right? Yeah, I got. Uh, I want to share my 20-minute phone call I had with them today with you guys. Until next time, be safe, and we'll see you on the next one. Happy New Year.